while we have been closed to the public, we are still there working for you. And, and if you need any assistance, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, the number at the Senior Center is 508-497-9730. And we, at, during this time, we are still offering virtual programs, um, which means that you can sign in using your tablet or your laptop, even your phone, to some of our programs. But you can also reach us by listening by phone. So if there's anything that you see in our newsletter, which is right here, this is the February one, you'll have it in your mailbox, should have it already. Um, if there's anything that you're interested in seeing, reach out to us and we'll see how we can get you connected again, even if it's just listening in and being able to um, hear the program or some of our programs are more interactive. We have a coffee hour and we'd love to hear from you. So again, reach out to the Senior Center and we will help you get connected because that's the most important thing during this time when we're sitting at home alone. This morning, we have a great show and uh, we have Marlene Troops and Kim Carson who are our outreach workers. And I also have Lisa Deneen here to say hello to everybody. And um, so we're looking forward to what uh, they can tell us. And I know that Marlene and Kim have been hard at work with fuel assistance and the big question, and I'll let them address this, is vaccines. Because I know everyone, the big word right now is, what do we do about the vaccination? Where can I get it? So good morning, Marlene and Kim. How are you today? Uh, good morning. I'm well. Good morning. Doing well. And it's trying to stay a little bit warm. I've got a heater on below my table here because <laughs> um, nice building, but you know, it's, it feels so good to be warm on this so cold morning. Um, I, I just spent a couple of hours sitting outside in my car at a testing site. So uh, I was oh away over the weekend, so I have to test in order to come back into the real world. Um, but it was cold. It definitely was cold. Yeah. Um, but speaking of cold, we need heat. And one of the things that Kim and I do for the town of Hopkinton, for people of all ages, you don't have to be a senior. It's handled at the senior center, but we help uh, individuals, families, all ages with fuel assistance. So um, we've published the senior center. I've published the figures in the past, but just in case people want to know, um, it is income qualified, meaning that you have to have a certain income guideline set out by the state that SMOC adheres to. But if you are a household, now I'm going to look at my cheat sheet. If you're a household of uh, $39,105. So just think 39,000 if you're one person living in your house, 39,000 if you're below that, if you have that for an income or below, um, certainly qualify for uh, fuel assistance. So if you contact the senior center, we can walk you through that. For another example, like a household of two, uh, the cap, it caps out at, this is what the figure's at. If you have over 50, well, it caps at 51, let's say 200, 51,000, actually 137. So if your gross household income is below 51,100, consider applying for fuel assistance. And then it goes up in increments, the household all the way up to, well, they've even got figures for household of 17. Um, so, and it's, it's really an easy process when you pull the paperwork together. It's paperwork that we all have like a driver's license, you have to have a social security card or a passport or uh, naturalization papers for anyone in the household, all ages of per, uh, newborn to 104. Uh, they want a social security card or a proof of, of the person, birth certificate. Um, and then just proof of the income, um, social security, wages, unemployment compensation. And if you're a homeowner, uh, your um, tax, your real estate taxes, they will consider that. Um, homeowner's insurance and a mortgage, if you have that. And, and then your heating bills, either your Eversource, your gas bill, <clears throat> and also your, your electric bill. The good thing about applying too is if you qualify, you get automatically put on the discount rate for uh, your electric, Eversource Electric, and also if you heat with Eversource Gas, you get a discount rate on that also. Um, people who heat with oil get a little bit more of a stipend than um, gas heat because oil costs um, 
a little, a little more to heat with than gas. And, um, and it, every month you will get a discount. Uh, uh, it could be like $35 off of your electric and gas bill. And um, so please give a call to the senior center and um, ask for outreach. We'll see, you know, talk to you about the income um, guidelines and we'll make an appointment to, uh, to have you come in and uh, give us your paperwork. We'll get the application filled out, sent into SMOC, and then it takes about probably a month to get the figures um, back out to you to tell you what you'll be getting. Or, and if you, people are denied, I tell them, don't panic. It just means that you need to come up with all the, another piece of paperwork that SMOC is looking for. So the big, the big message is if you have a question about or you're concerned about your covering your fuel assistance and you think you might qualify, definitely give a call to the Senior Center. We can help you with that and we can help um, you navigate that whole process. Yes, I probably went on and on because I've been doing it for so many years. <laughs> well, you know it better than anyone, which is the good news. <laughs> we'll straighten it out. Thank so you. again, that number, if you do need that, is the Senior Center's number, which is 508-497-9730, and ask for outreach. Or if, you're, if you forget that part, just say you'd like some help with fuel assistance, and they, the an people answering the phone will be able to direct you to the right person. One more thought on that. Um, the program closes right now, April 30th. So you have until April 30th to get your application in. Okay. Great. And then the following years, they, they have to reapply or they have to, yeah. so the, 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 the important thing is get on the books, get into the system and we can help you. And once you do, once you are in the system, they will um, send you automatically, usually in August to September, SMOC sends you then the application and you handle it yourself. You're already in the system. It's a simpler process. Great. Well, thank you, Marlene. And, and I, I will ask you, you'll be my first guinea pig of the day, the question of the week. Um, I think it's not so tough, but what is your favorite winter activity? Reading. <laughs> Reading by a fire, right? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. My husband especially does all the work on the fire because, you know, it's, it's a real wood fireplace. Um, I, I just, I mean, I... It sounds terrible, but I tell myself I tolerate the winter so that I can enjoy so much the spring, summer, and fall. But I mean, winter is beautiful. I mean, I'm, I like to paint. I'm an artist. I you know, like to paint um, oils, and winter is truly a beautiful season, especially after we've had a rainfall, and then you get the, the um, snow sticking to the trees. It's just beautiful. But, you know, I know it's still January, but it is the 29th of January. So February is right around the corner, which means spring is right around the corner, Marlene, just for you. So. All right. Well, now, thank you, Kim. I know you have something to share today and, and I will be working together with you on this one as well. So good morning, Kim. Good morning, everyone. So a couple of things, just wanted to remind you too that um, if you're experiencing any food insecurity, Outreach is here to help as well. Please call us. We have um, several resources we can help with. Um, also, I, I know transportation is a huge issue. Um, we're waiting to hear back. I applied for um, a transportation grant and we should know in early February, fingers crossed. Um, we're also still running uh, TED Talks every Monday at 1230 virtually, but you can also call over the phone. We can help you with that. Um, let's see, we had a really popular uh, TED Talk on the importance of sleep. Um, we've had TED Talks about ethics and designer babies. We've had uh, TED Talks about New Year's resolutions. Um, and it's uh, been pretty popular. So we'd love for you to join us. That's Mondays uh, at 1230. And so let me just say something about the TED Talks. What you do is you listen to a video and then there's a lot of conversation. So it is an interactive uh, program as well as informative. It is, yeah. A lot of thoughtful discussion. Um, and in terms of uh, the vaccine, I, for outreach, for me, as uh, I can help you maneuver the website on uh, mass.gov to 
uh, register for a vaccine. I did it for my parents the other day. <laughs> um, I understand it's, it's really cumbersome and can be a bit difficult um, and I'm happy to provide some guidance and support. So please call yeah, outreach if you have some questions. Definitely reach out to the senior center because we want to be able to help you with it. Um, it. It's all new to us. So be a little patient as we try to navigate it and work it as well. But we are here to help you um, get your, if you're interested in the vaccine. And right now, as of today, we're still looking at people 75 and up. Um, the town is hoping, as, as Sean McAuliffe, um, the health director told us last week, is to, hoping to have a clinic here in town. And there is a... Um, document that you can sign up for that. It's not signing up for a vaccine. It is actually saying, put me on the list and they will call when we know whether when we uh, get it in town. Right now, we don't know how many doses we may get. So definitely put your name on that. And then you can still continue to try to find the vaccine um, or a, um, a slot for a vaccine elsewhere. So don't hesitate to do both of those until we know, you know where you can end up. Um, but again, you know, this is all new to all of us. Um, we are excited that we are able to help you though. So feel free to give the senior center a call about that as well. Now, Kim, about food insecurity, we do offer uh, lunch still four days a week, Tuesday through Friday. So that is something if you are in need, um, it is through, uh, we've had grants and we still have a grant right now that's helping us pay for that, um, partially pay for it, not completely. But it is a great meal. We've got great cooks here at the Senior Center, so feel free to take advantage of that. But other than that, make sure you do reach out if you need any other assistance. We can certainly help you with that as well. I will make one announcement. Um, we are in the process of getting um, the ability to help with taxes again this year through AARP. It will be a much smaller program and it will be run differently. Um, we do have limited spots. And it will be in a new format where it will require two trips. Uh, the first one will be a drop off some documentation that they can scan and then they will do your taxes. And then you will come back a week later and actually uh, sign the forms and talk to the representative. Um, they will, in the meantime, they will be filling out all your, your taxes and they'll have the forms to you. So we have, again, it is a very limited, um, limited program this year due to the pandemic, uh, but please feel free to give us a call. I think we, we are not yet taking names this week, but hopefully next week we will be starting to take names of people who are interested. And spots, even in a good year, fill up fast. So if you uh, aren't able to get in, you will need to find someone else who can help you with your taxes, but try, try the senior center first and hopefully we can help you with that. And uh, you know what, Kim, I did forget to ask you, what's your favorite winter activity? Skiing. <laughs> I, I hope yeah. I can go in February with my boys. I, 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 uh, my parents taught me when I was three years old and um, I really admired their efforts. <laughs> it was difficult for me. I, I really appreciate what they did, but I, I really love skiing. So hopefully, hopefully we could do something in February. Do you know, my kids all started earlier than I did. And so they are much further along than I was at their age, obviously. I think for some of them, they're already skiing before I started in college. But um, I have to say that is a really fun, fun activity for the family. And, and you're right, teaching a three-year-old is not easy. <laughs> So Lisa, actually, well, first of all, Kim, anything else or Marlene, anything else to add to what we have going on? Um, no, but I was thinking of winter, getting into the winter sports. I was just so um, surprised. Um, my daughter took her two young children on a, on a ski venture. And um, I mean, I used to ski when I was younger. Like I said, now I've turned to reading and crocheting, but um but skiing, they don't call it snow plowing anymore. They call it making a pizza. Oh. <laughs> so even that has changed. They have you thinking of food all day on the slopes is the problem. <laughs> so. 
Oh. Well, and you know what? I'm so excited. It looks like Lisa's computer is working this week. Last week, she had some difficulty getting in, so I'm hoping that she's in. Um, Lisa, I'm going to start with you. What is your favorite winter activity? Uh, hmm. For me, it's all about the dogs. So I do like going hiking with the dogs in the snow. Now, do they like the snow? It, <laughs> this is really weird. It kind of depends on the texture. You know, if it's light, fluffy snow, that's great. Though this morning it was so cold that the paws were up in the air like this because they were frozen. <laughs> it was brutal this morning. But if it's all icy and crunchy, they're not big fans of it. But nice fluffy snow. I like going out um, with them in the woods and looking for deer tracks. So I don't see You haven't much. tried the booties on your guys, have you? No. Well, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> I actually put my own socks on one of my dogs just to see how he would do. And he was walking around the house. <laughs> it was I, I, I have to maybe, I'm, maybe I'm a little sadistic, but I do find those uh, videos kind of funny when you I see do the dogs. <laughs> he was like, and, exactly. <laughs> So, that's so Lisa, how are you? And I know you love saying hi to everybody because you miss I everyone. Do. I do. I miss everybody so much. But um, hopefully we're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. I know it seems like it's been hurry up and wait for, what, 11 months now. And now that the vaccine's becoming available, I know very many people want to hurry up and get it. But again, I'm hearing, I don't know, Kim, I wanted to ask you about the um, mass.gov website. Mm -hmm. Is it true what I'm hearing this morning is like most of the appointments are filled up for next week, but they open up appointments on Thursday for the following week? Is that? Well, that's what I've read, but um, I, I think it's a good idea to keep refreshing the page because okay. they'll pop up one or two appointments will pop up if you continue to hit refresh, so. Oh, okay. That's so the big thing is keep looking. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I have heard, uh, you know, and I don't know from my own experience, I've kind of read elsewhere and, and heard from um, some people who have said that the, the, and when I say mass, I don't mean Massachusetts, but the larger sites are actually mo moving more smoothly than you think they might. You know, they, they're not standing in the cold in line. So don't be afraid if you um, really want to get it sooner than later and you want to get to into one of the mass sites. I'm being told that they're not as bad as I think the horror stories were, were starting to come out. But I, I don't know that from my own experience at this point. So... Mm -hmm. But Lisa, I know we have a couple of programs coming up in September. Or September, where am I? <laughs> in February. I'm so sorry. People. I'm off and running today, aren't I? I got up too early. Um, but I don't know if you want to talk about some of the things coming up in the first yeah, couple weeks. So um, February 12th, we have a program on Zoom. Um, the swinging fashions of the swinging 60s. So um, that is Friday, February 12th at 1230. And it is on Zoom. Um, if you need any assistance getting in there on your computer or lap, um, tablet or phone, just call the senior center. We can help you help you navigate that. And they will have to register with us as well so yes. that we can send them. Yep, we would, so we would um, send you the link via email. Um, we have some craft bags coming up in February. Just to let you know, there was a misprint in our Hilltopper. It's actually pick up um, for the craft bags is Tuesday, February 16th. It says Monday in our Hilltopper, but that's President's Day. So nobody will be here that day. <laughs> but um, so there kits are fortune cookies you make your own fortune cookies or uh pillowcases and you can pick them up here um between 11 30 and 12 on tuesday the 16th and the only caveat about the pillowcase is you should have your own sewing machine for that we do not give you the sewing machine to do that project so. but we do have 
hot glue guns, correct, for the um, fortune cookies. Those are available. Um, we have our book club. If you're interested in that is uh, Friday, February 19th. Um, and that, again, we do on Zoom, but you can certainly call in to discuss the um, books that we have. We have um, specific books for the month, um, but also if there's anything that you've read or um, want to recommend, um, we have, we're always looking for recommendations um, for any books that, that you've been reading lately. So that is again, Friday, February 19th at 1230. What else? We still have all of our exercise programs going. Um, we have something every day, Monday through Thursday um, through Zoom. We've got yoga, Zumba, um, tap, boot camp, strength and stretch. Um, what else would I miss? Bar. So all of those are available if you are interested in moving. Always important to move. Um, that's why we that's why keep moving. moving, right? And the one last thing I wanted to mention is the, um, the Senior Center Apparel Store will be opening on February 12th to the 26th. So you have two weeks to shop online. And then they put all of the orders together and then they'll let me know when everything's ready. So you can either order hats or masks, base, baseball caps, sweatshirts, t-shirts, um, tank tops. We'll be wearing those again sometime soon. So lots of good stuff there. Sounds good. Well, like like we've said in the past, there is a lot going on at the Senior Center, um, even though we're not in the building with you. Um, so make sure you take advantage of some of our programs. And again, your newsletter, from what I'm told, has arrived. So this is February. Make sure you pull that out and read it through. And I'm sure there's something that you can connect with. Um, so I guess anything else? So we've got everyone's, oh, so Think of this for next week. I want people to think of what their favorite at winter activity and we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can send us an email if you can't get in any other way, but we'd love to, this is a live program. We don't have a number today, but we would love to have you kind of listen. Let us know what your favorite activity is, winter activity. Uh, you know, so today we actually have another announcement that we've, you may have seen in the newsletter or heard. Um, it, it's an HCAM news story about a Daniel DeLiva, who is an Eagle Scout, who did a project at the Senior Center, and he built us a outdoor on our patio chess table, and it's beautiful. And this is an, an HCAM news story that we get to share with you here now. Hello, everybody. Tom Nappy here, and today we are talking with Daniel DeLiva. Daniel, how are you? Good. How are you? Great. Uh, so, Daniel, you are a Boy Scout. You're going for your Eagle Scout Award. Mm -hmm. And I understand you have a great project going on uh, over at the Senior Center. Can you talk about your project and what you're doing? Sure. Uh, I built a, uh, a patio at the, in the backside of the Hopkinton Senior Center. And uh, we put a granite chess table and seats uh, there for seniors to enjoy. That is terrific. Uh, so how long has it taken you to do all that? And has uh, anybody helped you, any businesses or any volunteers or anything like that? Uh, I had a huge help from uh, Swenson Granite, McIntyre Loam and uh, Western Nurseries. They helped provide a bunch of materials and donated, which uh, helped make the project complete. So are you still working on the project or uh, is it complete? Uh, what's next in the uh, process? Uh, so the project is complete. We completed it around like uh, mid-October. So um, it has been done, but the weather, not much use in uh, coronavirus. So, but uh, I'm almost done with Eagle, uh, the Eagle rank. I just have a little bit left in paperwork and then hopefully I can uh, finish it. Terrific. And uh, how long have you been in the Scouts for? Um, I've been in Scouts for many years. I started as a Tiger Cub in uh, Cub Scouts. So probably around 10 years, I'd say. That's been a long journey. That's excellent. Uh, what are some of your favorite things to do? Uh, like some of your favorite uh, scout activities? 
Uh, the trips are awesome. Uh, you, it's new experiences you would never get to experience if you just you were living your normal life. These they provide you so many new ideas and ways to build upon like the world. So it's just stuff I've never got to do before, and it's awesome. That's terrific. Uh, well, Daniel, I'm sure the Senior Center appreciates what you are doing. Um, thanks for the uh, great community service you're providing, and we certainly uh, hope that you'll have that uh, Eagle Scout Award, and we look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully get that Eagle Scout Award very soon. Uh, congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you. So I know that we are very excited to have this, and, and in the spring, I'm hoping we can... Uh, We'll have to figure out how to do it if we're still practicing social distancing, which we still are at this point. So even with the vaccine out there, please remember we are still social distancing and masking. But I'm looking forward to when we can actually have some tournaments outside and, and enjoy the patio. It's the gardens back there, the patio are beautiful and come spring, they will just bloom. So, and throughout the summer and fall. So we hope you take advantage of that. But I am, I'm looking for the grand reopening where we can show this off and, and show Daniel's project off. And again, thank you to HCAM for their new story and letting us present that to you guys today. Um, you've definitely seen these stories in the, in the newsletter. And uh, I, like I said, I can't wait to open up. I think Lisa feels the same way. Kim and Marlene, we all wanna see you and everyone at the Senior Center, those who aren't with us today, I know they feel the same way. We wanna see all of you back. We want to uh, connect with you all again. And that is one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, if you're feeling as though you need someone to talk to because you're stuck in your home still, please give the Senior Center a call. We have a wonderful group of volunteers and staff who are willing to reach out and you know, have a conversation with you. So don't hesitate to give us a call at the Senior Center. Again, the number at the Senior Center is 508-497-9730. And please give us a call. Uh, we want to hear from you. And if, if that's something that appeals to you, definitely sign up for it. Uh, let us know. But in the meantime, you know, the senior center doors still aren't fully open. We're trying. Um, but please stay safe. Wear your mask. Uh, even with the vaccine, we're told we still need to be masked. We still need to practice good hygiene and social distancing. We want you safe. We can't wait to see you back at the senior center. So until we're till next time, take care. <laughs>